What's up everybody, Chris from Full Steam Designs. Today I'm going to show you how I built this farmhouse bar that's built from a mixture of new and reclaimed materials. We got a lot of stuff to cover, so let's get to work. I started this project like I would start any cabinet build, by breaking down the sheets of plywood that I'm using for the carcass. I used a combination of the track saw, table saw, miter saw, and some other tools to get this done. I need to cut a few dados to help support the shelves. My favorite way to do this is with a router table. It can get a little difficult to handle some of the larger pieces, but I just take my time and focus on keeping the pieces square against the fence. I usually run everything through twice just to make sure I get a nice even depth cut. Since I just do this stuff on the side, I try to set aside a whole day to get all of the pieces cut at once. I make sure I get my cuts as close to perfect as possible because it really helps with the assembly process. I'm using these corner clamps to hold everything square. I glue and use pin nails to hold everything together while I pre-drill and install screws. The second cabinet was nearly identical, so I'll save you from having to watch me do that again. Once both cabinets were done, I could start installing the two and a half inch strips of plywood around the outside edges. This will create a border for the metal panels to fit inside. I used three quarter, but half inch should work fine also. I get this corrugated metal roofing new. I've tried sourcing reclaimed stuff, but it's hit and miss, and this lets me control how much rust I want. I start by spraying everything with muriatic acid. You can see the fumes coming off of this as soon as it hits the galvanizing. This is definitely something you should do outside, and a respirator is a must. I let that sit for about 30 minutes, and then spray everything with hydrogen peroxide. This rusts the surface where the galvanize has been removed in a matter of seconds. I like how it mostly settles in the bottom of the valleys, as if water had been sitting there for years. I leave this outside until it's dry. I then rinse everything off with water. I haven't found a need to use baking soda or anything to neutralize the acid. While the pieces are drying, I spray some black paint around the inside of the plywood border. This stuff is pretty thin and cuts easily with shears. The edges can be super sharp, especially after cutting them. I used construction adhesive and self-tapping screws to hold everything together. The construction adhesive cuts down on rattles and the screw holds everything in place until it dries. I needed to trim a little bit off a piece and this was a good excuse to try out this vintage Dayton shear I just picked up. It works great on the flat sections, but it gets a little heavy when you're trying to go over the hills and valleys. I'll stick to the shears for that. Now I can focus my attention on the face frames. For this I'm using some slightly rougher cut red oak. I went with 4 inch strips for the bottom and 2.5 and inch for everything else. I was originally just going to glue and pin nail these on, but I decided to add pocket screws because they will probably be taking a little bit of abuse when getting transported to the location they'll be sitting in. I kept all of these on the outside or bottoms of the shelves so you won't see them once everything is assembled. Everything gets a quick sanding and I use a trim router to round the edges over. I 
I used Minwax Spar Urethane to seal all of the wood on this project. After seeing how the face frames came out, I decided to scuff them up and use a gel stain to highlight the grain a little bit. Because it's going over the poly, it doesn't completely stain the wood. It's subtle, but I think it adds to the rustic feel of this project. I gave the face frames another coat of poly and waited for everything to dry. These pony face frame clamps are a lifesaver when it comes to attaching cabinets together. They hold everything tight and in alignment and even have a pilot hole for the screws. I'll put links to these and everything else I used on this project in the description. I overhung the face frames by about an eighth inch to help with any deviations in the sides of the cabinet. This left a gap in the back that I filled with some strips of oak. Once the trim gets installed, this will all look seamless. Speaking of trim, I used some more construction adhesive and brad nails to hold these strips of reclaimed oak on. Now stuff is really starting to come together. Now it's time to make some doors. I've been holding on to a couple pieces of this reclaimed barn wood, and this is just the right project to use them on. The grain and tiger stripes look crazy in this stuff, and the checking and bug holes really give it some character. After running everything through the planer and trimming the pieces to length, I laid out holes for dominoes. Once everything is assembled and has some time to dry, I cut two rabbits on the inside. One will hold more corrugated metal, and the other one will hold a plywood panel. I lost a bit of this footage, but I just used staples to hold the panels in. I get my black iron pipe fittings from a couple different companies on Amazon, but I like to go to the hardware store for the pipe. They cut it to length and thread the ends. One of the threads was a little messed up, so I cleaned it up with a file. They also sell fittings specifically designed for furniture that slide together, but I think these look better. I made some wooden support brackets to go between a couple of the fittings and corrugated metal on the bandsaw. I traced my cut lines by holding these chunks of poplar against a piece of corrugated metal, and then I cut them to the right thickness. Once I could get them in place, I traced the circle onto the flat side. These ended up getting a coat of gel stain and poly. I removed the footrest and used clear gloss lacquer on the corrugated metal to seal everything in. I drilled a bunch of holes in the top of the carcass and brought the tops in. I already stained and sealed the bottoms. The stain probably wasn't necessary with the exception of the areas that overhang but it's 100% necessary to seal all sides of these tops to prevent them from warping. I rounded over the edges and sanded everything to 220 grit before using gel stain to darken them up a bit. I usually wouldn't stain hardwoods, but I think this came out great. It really accentuates the rougher areas and the grain. When brushing on poly like this, I like to use a foam brush and coat the entire surface. 
Then I use just the tip of the brush and lightly drag it over the whole surface in even lines. This seems to help cut down on bubbles. I did two coats on the tops. The doors got the same treatment. While they were drying, I installed the top with lag bolts. After fitting the doors, all that was left to do was pull it apart and move it to its new home. The two-piece design really helped getting this thing up the stairs. Assembled, it's 10 feet long. It fits in perfect with their theme. It's going in an event venue downtown called Haberdash that overlooks the historic market in Charleston. I built another bar for them a couple years ago that sits on the other side of their building. I'll put links to their website and Instagram in the description so you can check them out. As always, thanks for watching. I'd really appreciate if you guys would hit that like button, leave a comment, and share this video with your friends. If you haven't already done so, it would be great if you could subscribe to the channel. I build all kinds of stuff using wood, metal, and other materials. Thank you so much to my patrons and everyone who's bought me a coffee recently. Check out those links down below or grab a t-shirt if you'd like to help support the channel. Until next time, I'll see everyone over on the next video.